In this problem, we're going to prove that the limit as n approaches infinity of c over n to the p is equal to zero, where c is non-zero and p is a positive number. So we're going to do it using um, the definition of what it means for a sequence to converge. So recall that whenever we have the limit as n approaches infinity, of let's say a sub n, and that's equal to L. If L is a real number, we say the sequence converges, and we write the following. So this means, uh, let me use some shorthand notation. So this means for all, it's an upside down A, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists, it's a backwards E means there exists, uh, an integer n, so I'll say capital N, is in the set of positive integers. So using some shorthand notation here to uh, avoid writing so much, it's totally worth knowing. So this is for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a capital N, so an integer n, right, it's in the set, that's what this means, and this is the set of positive integers, such that for all little n greater than capital N, we have uh, the distance between a sub n and l is small. We can make it as small as we like. In particular, we can make it smaller than epsilon for any epsilon, meaning that you know it's getting infinitely close, right? It's true for all epsilon. Okay, so this is the definition we're going to use uh, in order to um, you know work out this problem. So first, we actually have to figure the problem out because I haven't done it. <laughs> so uh, plus, this will show you how to do it on your own, and then we'll go ahead and go through the proof. So the first part of the problem we'll call um, the scratch work. Let me use a different color. So this is the scratch work. So basically, uh, we'll have epsilon greater than zero. We'll have that. I'm right? just working backwards here. This is not the proof. We're just figuring it out. And we need to find n. Right? We need to find capital N such that this is true. So our a sub n here is c over n to the p. So we basically need n so that c over n to the p minus l, so our l here is zero, and this needs to be less than epsilon. So we need c over n to the p, an absolute value, um, to be um, less than epsilon. Now, we don't know if c is negative, right? We don't know. Uh, we just know it's not zero. So we need to be careful here. Um, we can't really take the c out of the absolute value. We have to leave it in there, just like that. The n can come out because n is an integer, so there's no problems there. And we want that to be less than epsilon. And I guess we should solve for n. So let's multiply by n to the p. So that'll give us the absolute value of c is less than epsilon times n to the p. So here what I've done is I've multiplied both sides by n to the p, so you cancel and you end up with this. Uh, let's divide by epsilon, we can do that, epsilon is positive. So we have the absolute value of c over epsilon is less than n to the p. And let's write it backwards, so this means that n to the p is bigger than the absolute value of c over epsilon. Right, just reading it backwards. So n to the p is greater than that. And then raise both sides to the 1 over p like this. 1 over p, 1 over p. So we're going to need n bigger than um, the absolute value of c over epsilon to the 1 over p. So we're going to need uh, an integer that is uh, bigger than um, this number. So what we can do uh, for that is we can just choose it using something called the Archimedean principle. So once we get to our proof, we're gonna we're gonna choose an n that's bigger than that. We know one exists by something called the Archimedean principle. The Archimedean principle basically says, uh, given any number, you can always find a natural number that's bigger. So this is a number. So by the Archimedean principle, we can find the natural number that's bigger. So we're allowed to invoke uh, that really cool property. Okay, we're ready for the proof now, so let's do it. So I'm going to use a different color. Okay, I'm going to use blue. And I don't want to scroll down too much because I want you to see the definition. So we have this for all epsilon here, so we're going to start by saying that. So we'll say let epsilon be greater than zero. And then we're going to say choose uh, an integer 
n such that n is bigger than uh, this here. This is the absolute value of c over epsilon to the 1 over p. So sometimes, not always, sometimes books just do this. They don't show you the scratch work. So you're looking at the book and you're wondering, where did that come from? Not always, but there's a lot of books that go through it, but there are some that don't. So this is how you get it, right? This is how you get it. So then for all n bigger than n, so we've done this, we've done this. So then, but all of this makes sense, right? P, uh, P is positive, so we can divide by P. There's no issues here, um, you know, in, in defining this. Then for all little n bigger than capital N, we have the following. So we have to look at a sub n minus L. So we have the absolute value. Uh, so a sub n is way up there. It's C over n to the P. It's that piece there. So C over n to the P minus zero. We have to show that this is um, less than uh, epsilon. So this is equal to the absolute value of C over n to the P, which is equal to the absolute value of C over n to the P. Let's pause here for a moment. Now let's try to, uh, let's try to uh, explain this in a very uh, elegant way. So note, Try to reverse engineer it here so this will be tricky so little n is bigger than capital n which is bigger than this beautiful thing here this is uh, the absolute value of c over epsilon to the one over p so this means that little n is bigger than parentheses absolute value of c over epsilon to the one over p and let's just think about what we're trying to do. We're trying to show that this here is less than epsilon. So let's take this and solve it for this somehow. So we can raise both sides to the p power. That'll give us n to the p greater than the absolute value of c over epsilon. And then we can multiply by epsilon and divide by n to the p. So we get epsilon greater than the absolute value of c over n to the p. It est, we have the absolute value of c over n to the p less than epsilon. And I prefer doing it this way in the proof. It's a little bit more work. But now, you see, we started our proof. We paused here, and then we took a moment to remind the reader what we're doing, right? Little n is bigger than capital N, which is bigger than this. Reverse engineer it, but not all the way, just to what you have here, and then go back and say it again. Thus, Let's just reiterate, starting with this, just for added clarity, right? It's all about trying to be, you know, as clear as possible. This is equal to, here we have the absolute value of C over N to the P. And we said that's less than epsilon. And that completes this awesome, awesome proof. What a cool proof. Really fun. So I hadn't done this until now, uh, until like right now. So yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought that was really interesting. Um, not too difficult. Um, you know, we didn't have to use logarithms a lot of times when you have stuff like this. You have to involve logs, and you have to be careful when you involve logs, because remember, logs can be negative, so that does affect some of these, you know, some of these proofs. Uh, but a really nice problem, and yeah, hopefully this has been helpful to someone out there in the world. Good stuff. Take care.